Well, let's uh, uh, discuss uh, today's ANC NEC outcomes and also developments from the court in Peter Maritzburg with political analyst Ongama Timka, who comes to us from Kabeh in the Eastern Cape this evening. Ongama, always great to chat to you. So the ANC NEC delayed their meeting over the weekend. Some of their members went down to Nkandla to try and quell tensions. Jesse Duarte is saying that they were there just in time to save the day uh, and stop a violent confrontation. What do you make of that? Do you think they were pivotal? I think that, uh, Sally, we may not see dramatic outcomes in terms of uh, what we desire as a nation. I know that we've grown impatient of uh, President Zuma and his shenanigans, especially those that support him. But I'm very much for the approach that government and the party to some extent have taken here of intervening there in order to resolve, uh, to try and resolve the impasse. To what extent they were successful is obviously highly questionable given the, you know, the, what, what that stage, entire stage was used as uh, to launch an attack against our constitutional order. But uh, we could be telling a different story today. We could be telling a story of uh, bloodshed, uh, people that were shot at or that, you know, a, a, a shoot out ha happening. Remember, Sally, that the Jacob Zuma and whoever was mobilizing support for him against the con constitutional order of the republic has got nothing to lose. The state, though, does. And, and, and national security concerns, in my view, were a lot higher over the past weekend than some of the justifications we have for a more direct confrontation with the group. Guess what? Today they are not there. Tomorrow they are not there. There will still be an opportunity to, 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 to put into effect some of the things that we want uh, effected, but uh, minus the political risks or uh, risks of conflict. And then, of course, in the meantime, we're seeing the legal process playing out a little more in Peter Maritzburg, the KwaZulu Natal High Court there, hearing arguments around a stay of execution of arrest for the former president. That matter has been reserved. Judgment's only going to come on Friday. In the meantime, the Constitutional Court has ordered uh, that the police have three days, which ends tomorrow at midnight, to now take the former president to prison. We know the police minister and the police commission have written to the constitutional court saying, can we hold off on this until judgment comes out? But it's not really their call to make, is it? You know, I was speaking to Tyrone Maseka earlier and he says, well, it still stands. Uh, that order still stands. What do you think is going to happen tomorrow? I may not be able to answer what's going to happen <laughs> tomorrow, but I think that the di dynamics have changed significantly since what motivated the police in the first place to be reluctant to execute the order. And after today's arguments, they, in fact, are still uh, at liberty to reevaluate their stance and take the action which they think, uh, when brought to scrutiny, would actually with, uh, survive the day. If their action was, uh, the deadline for their action was, was up until uh, su Sunday, I would still be happy with the stance that they have taken for a different rationale than what they have advanced. So it apparent, it's apparent in their court, paper, in, their, in, their, in their notice, through uh, the state attorney, they are advancing the idea of uh, the processes that are pending in courts. And I think that that's deeply flawed in the sense that uh, they cannot elect, as Advocate Mukai Tobi advanced the point. But here's another issue which I think uh, should be brought into focus here. We must remember that the doctrine of separation of powers is underscored by the idea that each of the arms of the state have got different responsibilities. So the courts do not, in the court system and the system of the effecting of the law has got no scope of managing political risks and uh, risks of outbreaks of violence. Their scope is to ensure that the rule of law is applied to the latter. However, I do strongly believe that the state, in fact, 
could elect not to execute the order under the circumstances of the political uh, uh, and, 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 and warlordism uh, context that we saw over the weekend, out of national security concerns. Now, I wanted to check this, Sally, in the Constitution before I could advance it here. But on a broader understanding of the political responsibilities that are upon the state, it was, for me, a very good choice not to actually execute the order citing national security concerns. Because, uh, as I say, the courts could instruct uh, a government in line with what they interpret the law to be. But government has got a responsibility to maintain national security above the constitutional integrity of the processes. So out of national security concerns, they could actually choose not to elect, uh, to, to execute the order. And in my view, that would politically be perfect and could be argued later on when they get uh, called upon to act. Uh, what would be wrong is the political accommodations, which are, are apparent in the statement that the ANC has made, which wishes that the, their statesman doesn't get arrested. Yeah. I mean, I hear what you're saying, that, you know, separation of powers is sacrosanct, but we have to look at national security concerns, and we also mustn't be naive. The reality is this is a highly influential former president who is going to go to prison. It has to be carefully managed, but as you say, at the same time, the law has to be followed because... The, I'm not sure what will be worse, the consequences of him not going to prison um, or the consequences of him going to prison, the consequences of perhaps rather a political manipulation of this process. Yeah, so, so remember, uh, uh, that the, 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 by the way, we are discussing this and not whether or not former President Jacob Zuma was involved in state capture out of his own political legal strategy. That's the question we should be asking in the first place. Okay, so, 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 so the reason why he has chosen this and the reason why he has chosen to respond to the Constitutional Court in a segmented way, taking one battle uh, to the High Court, smacks of a guerrilla strategy that says, and in fact, it's how he would have wanted the State Capture Commission to have done things, to go to a high court, to go and, and institute proceedings against him with a view to have him in, in, in charged for contempt in the first place. So he didn't envisage a process where the commission was going to go straight to uh, the Constitutional Court. Now that we're here, he's responding in a way, again, that invites national conversation around his strategy, as opposed to the broader issue of uh, you know his role and what's right and 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 and, and 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 what is wrong. Yes, indeed, we must be sensitive to these political machinations and the use of the law and the courts in this way. But unfortunately, when you deal with somebody who fights in this way, it's important to, while maintaining a good focus on the broad issue to still be prudent about each of the small steps and, the, and, and what we would call skirmishes uh, that are being advanced so that those are fought in the correct way because the, the opponent has got nothing to lose, really, President uh, 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 Jacob Zuma. Yeah, you make an excellent point. Thank you so much for your time this evening, political analyst Ungama Timka, coming to us live from Kabecha this evening.